Today on BRS TV Investigates, why would anyone go multi-membrane? Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of BRS TV Investigates, a weekly YouTube series which explores popular reefing theories, products, methods, what the manuals are missing with a focus on putting them to the test. This week we're testing if these upgrade kits, which run multiple membranes in series, really double water output and cut the waste to product water ratio in half without significantly impacting membrane performance and longevity. I think almost anyone will come to the conclusion that if one 75 gallon per day membrane produces 75 gallons a day of RO water, then two membranes will obviously produce 150 gallons a day. However, there is some debate as to the best way to do that with different plumbing techniques. One camp saying running the membranes in parallel is the best and the other in series. I can tell you right now there's a huge performance difference between the two. Running the two RO membranes in parallel means simply using a divider prior to the membranes so they both have their own water feed. Essentially, you're using the sediment filters and carbon blocks to pre-filter the water for two separate membranes and they'll perform that way. Both providing 75 gallons a day for a total of 150 and both producing their own wastewater. Provided you have enough water pressure at double the flow rate, this is a perfectly suitable option. However, there is another option, which is running two membranes in series, which in the water industry is often referred to as wastewater staging, because you're staging the membranes in series where the wastewater from the first membrane is feeding the second membrane. This is an attractive option because you then only have to have one membrane producing wastewater, which essentially cuts the overall waste to product water ratio in half. It also means significantly lower consumption of the carbon blocks and sediment filters and double the flow rate versus a single membrane so the water saver systems and water saver upgrade kits which turn your existing system into a dual membrane system are pretty popular. However, a lot of people have some pretty serious questions about the merits of feeding the second membrane with the waste of the first. Will it ruin the second membrane or will the resulting water be poor quality which are both legit questions and what we're going to get to the bottom of today. So what we're going to do is test the performance of a single 75 gallon per day membrane system in terms of water quality, flow rate, and waste production. We'll then compare that to the two membranes running in parallel and then the two membranes running in the water saver in series configuration. Our river water supply here in Minneapolis is one of the more challenging to clean properly with significant amounts of nitrate, phosphate, silica, and near legal limits of chloramines, which is chlorine and ammonia reacted together. However, the overall TDS is fairly low and generally in the 90 to 110 range. Today we tested 94 to 95 TDS throughout all of our tests using the Hawk HQD benchtop meter and conductivity probe. The single Dow membrane was running at 60 PSI and able to bring the 95 TDS down to 2.16 TDS and pretty close to 98% rejection, which is pretty good considering some of the harder to remove elements in our water supply. The wastewater or concentrate leaving the membrane measured 126 TDS, meaning the TDS of the wastewater is roughly 33% higher than the tap water entering the membrane, which again was 95. The product or purified water flow rate was 190 milliliters a minute, which equates to 72 gallons a day and just shy of the listed 75 gallons a day. The wastewater on systems like this is dictated by the flow restrictor on the wastewater line. Some of you may have noticed the numbers on these. In this case, ours says 550, which means the flow restrictor is set for 550 milliliters a minute. It will obviously vary to some degree based on pressure. The wastewater or concentrate flow was measured at 530 milliliters a minute and pretty close, which is around 201 gallons a day of wastewater produced. End of the day, this is pretty close to how you'd expect a reef system like this to run. The rejection and resulting water quality, flow rates, and waste to product water ratios, all pretty spot on. Moving on to the dual membrane parallel install, this time we're running at 50 PSI because the system has twice the flow and twice the waste. Most people are going to see a pretty significant drop in pressure with a parallel install like this one, and it will show in the results to some degree. In this case, the combined TDS from both membranes was exactly the same as a single membrane performance at a reduction from 95 to 2.16 TDS. As expecting it to be in the same neighborhood, but the exact same to the hundredth was a bit of a surprise. However, the drop from 60 PSI with a single membrane to 50 PSI with this dual install did show up in the flow rates. In this case, we were producing 315 milliliters a minute, which equates to about 120 gallons a day, which is about 30 gallons shy of the anticipated 150. 
As expected with the two membranes and the two separate waistlines, the total wastewater also almost doubled to 980 milliliters a minute or almost 373 gallons of wastewater a day, which is a 3.11 to 1 waste to product water ratio. The dual parallel membranes have a slightly higher ratio than a single membrane and more wastewater in this case, which is likely related to the reduced water pressure from the increased flow rates. As you can see, there's a pretty significant amount of wastewater produced with RO systems, and that can be beyond what many people are comfortable sending down the drain, either because it's expensive, there are drought conditions and local ordinances, which limit the amount of water you can use, as well as some pretty obvious environmental reasons. This is where the wastewater staging comes in, or running the dual membranes in series in a water saver configuration by feeding the second membrane off the waste to the first. I think some of you might be pretty surprised by how well this configuration performs. Running the dual membranes in series brings the pressure back up to 60 psi because there's only one waste line and less flow. At 60 psi, we saw the 95 TDS tap water drop to 2.43 once the product water feeds from each membrane were combined into a single feed. I think everyone expected the TDS to be somewhat higher because one of the membranes is being fed with the wastewater, but it's just 0.27 TDS higher, which is below what a common TDS meter on an RODI system is even capable of reading because they only read in whole numbers. To get a better idea of how this works, I think we can all follow the water along its path. The water entering the first membrane is 95 TDS and coming out of the product water line, 2.03 TDS. The TDS of the wastewater concentrate is now 126.6. The wastewater is often referred to as concentrate because by effectively removing the purified water from the solution, you're concentrating the contaminants in the remaining solution. In this case, the concentrate from the first membrane has 33% more TDS than the feed water. So feeding the now 126.6 TDS concentrate from the first membrane into the second, we saw a product water of 2.85 TDS, which is approaching one TDS higher and about 97.5% rejection. However, this is still under the range which most common TDS meters can even detect. And once you combine the two product waters into a single solution, the overall TDS dropped to 2.43. So overall, there is a slight increase in TDS, which means slightly higher DI resin consumption. But I think the other savings related to the water saver configuration will significantly outweigh that. As relates to flow, we achieved 365 milliliters a minute of product water, which is 138 gallons a day and just shy of the expected 150. However, the waste was just 535 milliliters a minute or 203 gallons a day, which is a waste to product water ratio of 1.47 to 1 and just about half the waste from a single membrane. I would call this goal achieved. I have a few other comments on this, but based on today's results, I'm going to go ahead and rate today's question of do upgrade kits which run multiple membranes in series really double water output and cut the waste to product water ratio in half without significantly impacting membrane performance and longevity a nine or almost a reef certainty. In this case, we almost doubled the water output and did cut the waste to product water ratio. The TDS increase from the product water was tiny and almost not measurable by most reefers at home. And the overall increase in TDS going into the second membrane was not so high as to indicate that there would be a longevity issue in a significant portion of installs. I will note this is all obviously scalable. If you have really dirty water, you may not want to run membranes in series like this. For example, if you have 500 TDS water to begin with, I'd expect the wastewater from the first membrane to be around 665 in many cases. So you just made your already existing water problem worse, which means in really hard water or dirty water scenarios, you might scale the membranes faster and they will need to be replaced slightly more often with two membranes. You may also consume DI resin faster as well. If you do have 500 TDS dirty water and still want to reduce the wastewater with a water saver membrane configuration, I'd suggest making sure the PSI is above 65 and installing an auto flush which will help keep the scaling deposits off of the membrane and extend its useful life. You might notice that we recommend 65 PSI for the 150 gallon per day water saver upgrade kits we offer. Technically speaking, they only require 50 PSI, however that doesn't factor in things like cold water and a variety of other elements which can impact performance. Getting the system up to 60 or 65 PSI helps ensure the system will run optimally, which is important in a water saver setup. You can run this configuration at 50 PSI, but the product water might be slightly slower and the rejection might go down just a bit. 
For those of you that are doing this to save money and maintenance time, you're not just saving money on water. I think most reefers completely overlook, they're also dramatically increasing the usable life of their sediment filters and carbon blocks because they don't have to process all that excess wastewater. For example, in this case, with a single membrane in today's test to produce 72 gallons of product water, it was 201 gallons of waste. That means the carbon block and sediment pre-filters had to process a total of 273 gallons of water to produce 72 gallons of product water. With 150 gallon per day water saver dual membrane install, we can produce 72 gallons in half the time, with half or only 100 gallons of wastewater processed. So the total water the carbon block and sediment pre-filters had to process is only 172 gallons rather than 273. Between the carbon block, sediment filter, and reduced water consumption, there's very likely some pretty significant savings for a lot of reefers who have reasonable quality water to begin with. I know a ton of you have either already installed this upgrade, bought your system this way, or considering it, so I'm super excited to see what all of you have to say in today's Reef to Reef thread. If you have more questions about this, that is certainly one of the best places to ask. As always, if you like what we're doing here, go ahead and let us know with a quick thumbs up and subscribe because we release tons of these videos all the time. See you next week with another BRS TV Investigates.